Hi there, guys. Just a quick video. Going to cover um, the raid weapons real quick. All of these have an adept version. Um, if you get five of the red border versions, you can then craft them. Uh, lots of neat stuff here. Uh, so we'll just just cover it real quick. Um, there aren't that many, so this won't this won't take long. There's like six guns total, um, and a couple of them are pretty limited. So. So this is the fusion rifle. It is a precision frame. It deals stasis damage. So it's the first one of its type, which is extremely unique. Uh, 80 recall direction. So you can either get arrowhead uh, to max out the recall direction or slap on um, a counterbalance mod, which will push you to 95. Um, as far as perk combos go, um, there's some good ones here. You can get liquid coils. Um, you can get Demo Adrenaline Junkie, which is pretty fun. Um, successful warm-up is very good and a lot of fun to use. Um, overall, I mean, you can honestly, like, it's got a good perk pool. Flight of Hand is honestly pretty decent. Uh, bait and Switch, not so much, unless this gets a buff. Um, chill Clip on this. Very good. I think Compulsive Reload or Chill Clip and then Demo AJ will be the best rolls you can get on this. Maybe throw in um, something like uh, Perpetual Motion, tap the trigger for PvP. Um, it's not bad purple. There isn't anything spectacular besides like a, a synergistic Chill Clip roll, though. Um, but I think that's good enough that you will have something there to work with, no matter what you want to do. Um, the mission, I think this is, like, probably my second... This is, I think this is my second favorite gun that I've gotten so far. The the grenade launcher might replace it at some point. I think the pulse is going to be my favorite, but I think this is my second favorite for now. Um... And it's, it's largely due to the synergy this gun has with some of its perks and the Soul Drinker Origin trait. So I guess that's, that's something to go over real quick. Soul Drinker Origin trait. Gain health based on the number of hits before loading. So not kills, hits. So if you're, like, full autoing a target with these guns for a while, and then you reload, you get a pretty significant chunk of health. And this SMG has multiple options that will um, combine well with this. And I say this because the way I understand it, and the way as, that as far as I can tell that it works, is it is only on manual reload. If you bypass the manual reload animation, it doesn't consume the heal, which to me would imply that it keeps stacking the hits. I don't know if there's a cap on it. It is something I need to test. But assuming there isn't a cap, you have two ways that you can dodge the uh, the manual reload in this column. So you can use overflow or, sub or uh, subsistence. Um, either one will refresh part of your magazine. And then in this column, you have demolition, which will also allow you to buy this. My role here is subsistence demolitionist. And this is what I've been it's just only using in my kinetic slide basically since I got it. Um, I have like I on I, I'm not even joking. I'm bringing double enhanced perk this forensic nightmare, and I have not touched it since I got this. Um, it's just so much more fun. I think a lot of it has to do with it being a lightweight frame as opposed to a precision. It's just a it's just a more engaging running gun frame to use. Um, so get something like this if with uh, Demolitionist um, Frenzy as well. Um, in a way, it's like a kinetic uh, funnel web. The common like the common funnel web god roll is Subsistence Frenzy. So you can get that here. You can get Overflow Frenzy. Um, it also has Swashbuckler, which isn't bad by any means. Um, so that option is available to you. Um, Perpetual Notion is not bad at all. Um, 
can get something like that in Swashbuckler if you want a more of like, I guess like a PvP focus role. But for PvE, like, and honestly, the, the neat thing about this is once you're able to craft it, you can craft freaking um, Extended Barrel, Alloy Mag, Overflow Frenzy at level 1. Which means it's going to be so easy to level this thing to a point where you can craft what you want. Because, like, you only need, and you don't even need to max it out to get demo. If you, like, you'll need to max it out if you want to swap. But if you want demo, it's right here. It's, it's here at 12. So you don't even have to unlock everything. And honestly, I think I'm probably just going to recraft the same thing. I'm probably, like, when I double enhance craft this, I'm probably just going to go enhance subsistence and enhance demolition. Um, assuming that exists, I don't know. If the, no, that, okay, that's assuming that enhanced subsistence exists. Okay, it does. Increased amount of ammo on reload. Okay, so. I'll be going enhanced assistance of enhanced demolitions. Um, the reason for that, you get more ammo back on kill with enhanced subsistence. Enhanced demolition is gives you more grenade energy back um, on kill. So that's that's probably what I'll go with. Um, probably hammer forge act, or maybe even. Probably full bore, honestly. Maybe hammer forge. One of these two with accurized subsistence demo range masterwork. Um, you don't need to worry about recoil directions. If you get like arrowhead or chambered or I think, okay, so those are the only two. If you get either of those, just I wouldn't don't even worry about it. You have perfect recoil direction base. Um, this is just going to be a really fun gun to use. Like, if you like SMGs, this is probably going to be the most fun PvE SMG you can get outside of Funnel, funnel Web with the Void Explosion Rounds. Uh, so Liberate Ruin, this is a Solar Energy Glaive. It's the boss's weapon. It's so sick. It is one of the, probably the coolest weapon as far as looks go that we've ever gotten. And the fact that it's not the raid exotic is honestly disappointing to some extent. But they wanted to do the whole class exotic glaive things. I get it. Um, they're kind of crappy, though, so you're honestly better off with either the Enigma or this. Um, what you'll want to do is you'll probably want Grave Robber Swatch. It synergizes. Makes sense. It's just, it'll, it'll be good. Um, if not that, Probably Grave Rob. I think Grave Robber will just be the best you can you can get on this. Uh, Turnabout would not be terrible either, but I think it's just it's Grave Robber and then Swash or Purple. Um, Surrounded and Wellspring aren't terrible either, but I just think this. I mean, this just makes the most sense. Um, obviously with the rest of this, you can do whatever you want. I usually go for max reload because otherwise it just feels like crap. Like you, you can do you. Um, forbearance. Okay. Energy waveframe grenade launcher. This has a lot of fun things you can do with it. You can get double for all. Um, you've got ambitious sets and chain reaction. Um, you've got unrelenting in this column, which... I would assume pairs pretty well with Soul Drinker for uh, the healing. Golden Tricorn is genuinely not a bad damage perk if you are someone that uses Arc quite a bit. Um, so if you're like a Titan or a Warlock, it's really easy to synergize around that. Obviously, Hunter not quite so much, um, but the option is there. Wellspring, very solid, um, very solid perk as well. Um, so you've got a lot of options here, and you can really, like, whatever catches your fancy. Uh, Unrelenting Chain Reaction is probably going to be the one I will want. With a Reload Masterwork. Um, Ambition Assassin Chain Reaction would be a close second. Uh, once I get the opportunity to craft this, I don't know what I'll go with yet. It'll probably be one of those two.
Um, I'll, I'm hoping I will get a random roll with Unrelenting before then. Uh, and then I will test that and see if it's really even necessary. If it's not, I will go with Ambitious Assassin. Um, it probably won't be necessary. Uh, since Chain Reaction, I assume, like, if you hit a hit a whole bunch of enemies in AoE, it'll, um, those hits will count for the Soul Drinker perk, and then you won't need to worry about it. Um, but it could be fun. We'll see. Uh, okay, so this is, my, I think this is going to be my favorite gun. This is going to be, this is 100% the first one I'm going to Red Border and Double Enhance. Um, and this has so many cool combos. You've got Demo AJ. Okay, and this is an aggressive frame for Burst Pulse. So we have one in the energy slot again. So the Kinetic One is Sacred Providence. That is a raid weapon. This is a another uh, from, that's from Garden of uh, Salvation. This is an energy one from the new raid. So now, at the very least, we have one in each slot. I'm kind of sad that we don't have more options for these, but what can you do? Um, so tangent aside, lots of fantastic options for this. Um, at level one, two, when you craft it, you can get Dragonfly one for all, which on paper is a fantastic Fantastic combination. Get a precision kill on a group of enemies. It'll proc one for all. And then you can just go to town. So 35% damage buff. Um, you can get double for all again. Uh, you can get Demolitionist Adrenaline Junkie, which is a really fun combo. You can get something like Rapid Hit Vorpal Weapon. Um, my current random roll that I enjoy using is... Uh, is Vorpal Dragonfly with Blurred Magwell and Airhead Break. Very, very fun roll. Um, and I will be using the crap out of this until I can craft the one I want. Um, what I will probably go with is Demolitionist and Rampage. Um, obviously, Adrenaline Junkie is also extremely strong. Um, but I just like Rampage. Um, I need to, one thing I need to test is whether Enhanced Rampage stacks with the Rampage spec mod. If it does, this is definitely what I will go with. If it does not, then I will reconsider and maybe go with Demo Adrenaline Junkie instead. Um, but again, not sure yet. Um, we will have to wait and see. Um, but this is, this is, I think, on paper, I think, like, Enhanced Demolitionist gives you more native energy on kill than normal Demolitionist. So I think that's just kind of like a duh, that's what I'm going to go with kind of perk. Um, but Dragonfly does, Enhanced Dragonfly gives a reload bonus, so that it is also appealing. Um, so we'll see. I'm still thinking about it. Dragonfly Rampage would be pretty fun. Um, I'm not sure. Enhanced Rampage, I'm just saying increases the duration. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot here. Um, since I mostly use this in PvE, I will probably go Flared Magwell to Reload Masterwork when I craft it. Um, but we'll see. Um, for your recoil direction. Arrowhead Break increases handling. This is a very sluggish archetype, so I think this is what you should ideally go with. And has a crappy 78 recoil direction. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it is not very good. Um, you can bump it up with Countermount Stock to 93, which isn't terrible. It is mostly vertical, but it does kick to the left a little bit. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I'm going to test that, actually, because 93 is not terrible at all. I'm going to test that, because if so, you might be able to pull off uh, Hammer Forge instead. But I just think going with Arrowhead is, it just makes, it's just, it just makes the most sense, I think. Because then you, then you can use a different mod on here. Because you can use like a Rampage or Dragonfly spec, and then you could use, uh, or you could use like a minor spec, major spec, uh, pull out a retrofit, 
super fan of that. Um, you know, there's just there's there, you've got a lot of options here that you could you could roll with. Um, the most commonly kept one is Rabbit Hit Vorpal, unsurprising, or Dragonfly Rampage, also unsurprising. Um, I'm surprised people kept bait and switch. I think that perk sucks. Um. If you are a PV, if you are a GM PV unit and you'd like hanging on to weapons for PVE endgame like Grandmaster Nightfalls, anything with shields. Rapid hit adaptive munitions is probably the role for you. You'll stick it in your vault, you will use it in like, I don't know. Two or three strikes where arc fields are actually important. Because honestly, off the top of my head, there really aren't that many. It's only really any like anything with fallen is gonna have arc, and even then, it's iffy because a lot of times the uh, the captains end up being overload champions. Um, but again, the whole point of this is that its effectiveness against energy shields that don't match the weapon's damage type, it adapts the damage output. So this like this will just be good anyway. If you want to use a pulse, this will be good. Um, I don't. I personally am not the biggest fan of pulse. Well, of, well of pulses in endgame, it, it, it kind of depends. Rapid hit will be really good. Um, I just think if that's your goal, I think you're better off as a fire team just making sure you have what you need to deal with shields and taking something like rapid hit vorpal. If you want to deal with champions, um, this isn't a bad perk. I just think it's a little it's a little niche, and this gun has better combos. If this was the um, the scout rifle that I've forgotten the name of, hang on a sec. So this scout rifle, what the heck is it? Here we go. So this scout rifle has basically the perfect um, shield breaker combo because you can go armor piercing rounds, Genesis, adaptive munitions. You can craft this at level four. So you don't even have to level it all that much. You can get like corkscrew, armor piercing, and then this. And I mean, it's just game over for anything with a shield and endgame content. And that's that's also in the energy slot. So I'm not sure why you would go with this when Vorpal is available. Uh, you can if you would like. I just don't think it's that great. Um, let me talk about Turnabout real quick as well because I think this perk is actually very good. Um, I thought it was oddly specific and only worked on enemies in their super. It would have been like losing knights and nothing else. This is just any shield. So the stupid mod over shield that they give regular hive enemies count. Regular shields in the environment on like captains and stuff count. Does anything that's a shield, you break it, you get an over shield instantaneously and it lasts like 10 seconds. It's insane. Um, on this gun, I don't think I would take this in this slot just because you have Rampage, you have AJ, you have Vorpal, you have one, like, Everything else except this stupid perk is better. But on something like Submission, you could go Turnabout and a damage perk, Turnabout. Like, Turnabout Frenzy would be very, very good for PvE. Um, because if you break a shield, you get an over shield. Frenzy keeps you in the fight for longer. Just be very, very strong. Um... Obviously, you wouldn't make, have quite as much synergy as you would with another perk combo and Soul Drinker, but it is an option that is available to you. Uh, I don't think yet. Yeah, okay, well, we'll get to the end here and we'll wrap this up. Uh, Cataclysmic, this is a linear fusion rifle. It is solar. This thing feels fantastic to use. I've been using it basically since I got it, just messing with it. Um, I have... Oh, excuse me. Tired. I have Sleight of Hand and Clown Cartridge. Fantastic. 
feels fantastic. Um, probably the best linear, the best feeling linear fusion I've ever used. Better than reeds, better than um, this void one, better than threaded needle. It's just a lot of fun to use, feels very good. Uh, and it has really good rolls. You can get fourth times and clown cartridge, your ammo efficiency will be through the roof. Absolutely through the roof. Um, Cause you can, you know, you'll be getting three ammo and your max size will be doubled. Um, you can also get four times the charm, high impact reserves. High impact reserves buff at the end of the mag is extremely strong. Um, which is very, very good. I was told this had auto-loading, and that is apparently a lie. It does not have auto-loading. So you will want fourth times, and then high impact or clock cartridge. Or focus fury. Honestly, focus fury would be good, too. Um, it doesn't synergize quite as well fourth times the charm, but it isn't bad. Um, overall damage is basically old Vorpal, but you do have to get through the whole mag. And you do have to hit all crits. Is that people? Oh, excuse me. Some people, that's probably pretty easy. Uh, for me, not so much. So that's not really what I'll be going for. This will probably be the last thing I go for, honestly, just because um, I already have, like, my roll is decent. It's sleight of hand clown cartridge. It ain't bad. Could it be better? Absolutely, but it ain't bad. Um, and I'd rather focus on other things. Um, but once I do get to it, it'll be, I'll probably do fourth times and high impact reserves, um, just because I am a huge, huge fan of high impact reserves. Um, let me take a look at collective obligation real quick. This is the raid exotic. So obviously, like I won't be getting this for a long time because RNG. Uh, but overall, it ain't bad. It's got decent. It's got good recoil direction at seventy six. Uh, it's got overhead break. It's got flared magwell. Uh, its stat package is pretty good. It's an adapted frame. Uh, it could be a lot better, but it's not the worst. Um, Umbral Sustenance, this weapon's magazine is automatically reloaded when you gain Devour, a Void Overshield, or become invisible. So, if you proc Devour, it effectively has, so it basically has Huckleberry's Perk. It's actually a better description. It's not subsistence, it's a whole mag. So, it's basically Huckleberry. Um, and it synergizes very well with Void 3.0. Spain Perk. Leeches void debuffs and damaging targets that are suppressed, weakened, or volatile. Once charged, you swap. You can hold on uh, the reload. You can swap firing modes, and then the damage from this weapon applies to those void debuffs that were leeched. So, I highly recommend watching Cool Guy's video on this weapon if you want to properly understand how this works. But the way I understood it is that in order to proc the alternate firing mode, you need to hit nine bullets on debuff targets. They can all be debuffed by one debuff, two debuffs, three debuffs, doesn't matter. It's just nine bullets on a debuff. Um, and it will pick up whatever debuffs were there. Um, and you need to hit, I think, three to pick up a debuff. So you need to hit a full burst. Um, so if the enemy has implosion rounds on them, you need to hit a full burst. It'll pick that up. It has three little circles in the scope, and they each stand for a different debuff. And once you've hit a burst, it'll it'll fill in with, like, purple, as I mean void. Um, so that way you know how many debuffs you have. If you hit nine of the same one, only that circle remains filled, but once you hit nine and you proc the perk, the big circle in the scope will be filled. And then you know, I can hold reload and apply this one debuff that I've gotten. Or two, or all three. It just depends on your, your build. If you're playing with allies that are also running void, it just kind of, it's, it depends. Um, then you proc that and you can apply it to targets. This, I think, is going to actually be a much stronger gun than people will give it credit for. 
It's just very, very restrictive. You have to be running Void. You have to be using some way to debuff people. It's just going to be... I don't necessarily want to... I think frustrating is the wrong word. I just think it's going to be a little... It's going to be a little too much work to be properly fun. Um, once I get my hands on it, if I ever get my hands on it, um, maybe it'll be different. But I feel like just looking at the perk perks on paper, it's it's a little much. It is, and there's just there's just guns that require a lot less effort to do similar things. Um, if I like, because the main thing I would use it for would be to uh, apply volatile rounds. So I would leech volatile and apply volatile. I'd use the volatile mods, etc. And I just like I could do that. I I would like I've got a good void bow. I've got deafening whisper. I've got I just picked up the catalyst for the dead messenger today that I'm gonna finish. And that is that is turn that's a that is a weapon designed to break shields that has turnabout on it. And it's main damage that it like the, the main damage like that you start with like the other two um element swap weapons is is void. So like you I mostly use it with void. I can hit like a whole room's worth of enemies and blow them all up. So I don't know why I would use this in that case. But I mean I do like adaptive frame pulses, so maybe maybe I'm just a little harsh because it feels it's it's it feels kind of shoehorned in. It does. I think I don't remember who it was that said that I, I think it was I don't remember if it was cool guy or if it was just some post on Reddit. But it's a void themed gun, which makes sense for this season. So why isn't it like this season pass exotic or just some sort of seasonal quest exotic? Why is this tied to a raid that has absolutely nothing to do with void? Like absolutely nothing. Like this is this is the only void weapon from this raid. It's just there. And I, I'm not not really sure why um, they went that route. Not a bad gun by any means. I just it's a little out of place. Um, I'm surprised they didn't make the uh, the boss's glaive the exotic. Uh, but I'm kind of I'm I'm glad they didn't. I'm just kind of confused why this is the raid exotic. I feel like they could have done something else with this. Um, but I mean, who knows? Once I get my hands on it, I'll mess with it. Um, and then we'll see how it goes. Uh, I don't believe it has a catalyst of any kind. So how it, how it is is how it is. Let's. Well, maybe it does. It has collective obligation catalyst. I don't. But like, does this show up for like every gun as an item? Yeah, it does. So yeah, I mean that it may exist, it may not. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if it did have one and it was tied to cringe. And it was tied to master in some way. Um, but yeah, for now, uh, I will reserve full judgment, but it is a little it's a little strange. Um so yeah, that's uh, that's the raid weapons. Kind of my thoughts on the exotic as well, even though I don't have a oh, I don't have a proper review for it, obviously, since I don't have it. Uh, but yeah, I think this is it's one of the most unique. It's it's extremely unique. I wouldn't say it's my favorite raid, but it's definitely the most unique raid they've made since probably it gives it definitely has last switch vibes. I think is definitely the, the best way to describe it. It is, it is Last Wish vibes. Um, it's a little bit easier to figure out than Last Wish, but like you need to you need to be on point with your with your teamwork, with your callouts. And it's got probably the, the best boss fight out of any raid in the series. As much as it was as much as it hurt to do over and over for 
I don't know. I probably fought that dude for like 12. Like, I think I spent like 30 hours playing that raid over Saturday and Sunday, and like 12 of them were against that boss. It was it was rough on contest mode. Um, but it'll it'll be easier now. But yeah, it's one of the probably the coolest boss they've ever done. Bar nine, and just it it was very different from the usual Destiny boss experience. So I highly recommend you give it a try. Try and get some of these guns. Uh, it you can only get two red bordered guns a week. You can purchase one from the vendor per week. So that's like at the end you can spend spoils on it. So that you'll get one. So it'll take you like five weeks with bad RNG. Um, but there is a secret chest thing. There's like symbols. So at the beginning of the raid, you'll see three symbols. There are a whole bunch of hidden plates that you have to toggle on to see what symbol they have. If you match all three, if you find all three of those symbols that match at the beginning, there is a second chest at the end of the raid after you kill the boss that drops a red border weapon. Now, I don't know whether that's random or not. I think it is. So with good RNG, it would take you like two or three weeks. If you manage to get it like twice in a row, with bad RNG, it's going to be five. If you want to like craft a weapon, because that's just how long it's going to take. Um, but so just like make sure. Well, OK, that's assuming that it's only once a week per account. If it's per character, this won't take long at all. Because um, then you can just run it three times, get three. And with any luck, it'll take you two weeks or two or three instead of five. Um, with a good RNG, it'll just be two. Uh, with, with really, really good RNG, if you can do that extra chest on every character and also purchase a red border on every character, take you one. But I think that's extraordinarily unlikely. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope you all enjoy. I'll, uh, I will, um, I'll probably have another video up once I maybe I'll make a review on the exotic and uh, talk about the uh, submission combo at some point in the future. So everyone, I hope you all enjoy your uh, whenever you're watching this. I hope you enjoy your morning, afternoon, evening, and um, yeah, I will uh, let you guys know how this combo goes.